Good morning gamers, SoftKitty99 on the Creative Builds World. I'm here in my little building a town place. You can see the town hall over there, the tea shop here and the medieval section right here. Every time I build I keep saying I'm going to build a small medieval house and so far the only small one we've built is this one right here with the living quarters upstairs and the workshop downstairs. We've got a little gap here between these two big houses and I thought we'll try and build a little tiny house right in here. So I've taken some stone bricks to make a little pathway away from the curb here. I want to set the house back say three blocks, one, two, three. So this fourth one here is going to be where we're going to want our door. I'm going to want the door inset so I'm going to put it on the back of the step. I'm going to use some bone blocks for my walls because I like the texture. You can also use the white wool, that makes a really nice texture for medieval houses as well. You're going to want to put a little frame around the door. Make sure you get your bone blocks in the right orientation to give you the nice textures on the outside. So we've actually got one, two, three there on the sides. Then going to want to grab your spruce logs and put a frame around your little end wall so that the frame will be four blocks tall and then fill in the centre across like so. So one, two, three, one, two, three and then we're going to want to put this down to the round one, two, three, four tall to join that up. Make sure we get these in the right place. Oops, the wrong orientation. One, two, three, four. And then back again by one, two, three. One, two, three. And join it down to the ground. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three across. And join it up like so. Grab your bone blocks and fill in your walls. Leave one block in the centre of each wall for a window. In fact, you're going to have to knock it out later in order to get the orientation correct of the bone blocks at the base of the... Yeah, I think the easiest thing to do is put all the blocks in and then knock the centre one out for the window because that helps you to place the top block easier than... Uh, messing about in any other shape, way or form. Just fill in the wall and then just knock out the centre one to pop in your glass. And I don't have any glass on my... Let's grab the glass. So I've got the great stained panes to make them look old, like old glass. You can of course use the, the clear or the white whichever suits your aesthetic. And then on the inside, for the floor, I would recommend the stone blocks, so that it kind of looks like the old flagstones that you have in a lot of the old houses, because they would quarry the stone from the local landscape in order to use for the building. And of course the stone is much more hardy than wood, so the flagstones are often what they used inside houses for the flooring. And then on the top we're going to want to put a little roof. So you can put stairs up as roof or you can use slab depending on how high a slant of roof you're going to want. So if you use stairs you could get a roof that looks like this. If you use slabs like we did on that one then the pitch of the roof is a lot less steep. I think for this one I might use the slabs. So what we're going to want to do is start on the outer edge and so put the slabs on the top half of the outer edge of that slab just like that. You can see that from the outside and then we go up half a slab at each level across as we go across the build and don't forget to extend the roof just by one 
extra at the side now with how close this is to the other building it is actually going to touch so one more block gap would have been nice to give a little bit of clearance but medieval houses often did touch when they were building because they wanted to build as much as they could in the smallest amount of ground space so quite often the houses really did touch which le led to very cramped living conditions for many people because it was very expensive to own land in which to build on which is one of the reasons that many of the houses extended over the ground floor plan and that of course led to even more touching of the buildings in the, any of the built up landscapes because people were trying to utilise their space to its absolute maximum and the airspace often meant that the houses touched overhanging streets and that of course is one of the reasons that the Great Fire of London spread so quickly is because the houses were often made out of wood and other flammable materials and they all touched one another so it meant that the fire spread really really quickly and that is because of the medieval style of houses and they're trying to use as much space as they possibly could at all times so we are actually quite accurate in the way they touch them and aesthetically today with the building we don't want them to touch but that often did happen in medieval times and so here we have our little tiny medieval house squished in between our bigger houses to use the space as much as it could now a family like that with little money and little space wouldn't have had a lot in their house they would have had a, a bed I can't, can't find the uh, beds right so uh, I would imagine something like a grey or a brown probably let's take the brown for the bed uh, and they would probably have had a chest to store stuff in though they probably wouldn't have had many clothes they might have only had the one set that they'd actually got on their backs So inside, we're going to want a couple of torches, of course, for the light. Ooh, let's put them up at the top there. Uh, they would have had a bed for mum and dad probably to put in the corner. And if they've got any kids, they would probably have had an, another bed stuck in extra for the kids to sit on. And... Uh, maybe a table and chairs and let's use a slab as the table make very very basic sort of living conditions and they might have had some seating well, let's not do it that way let's make it like that so that it's not going to encroach there and then of course the chest of drawers would well, it wouldn't be a chest of drawers they would probably have a couple of chests for storage and that is probably how a a family would have lived with very little space and everyone cramped in. And that is today's little house. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video from Socky to 99. Goodbye and Happy gaming!